Friends, our scripture reading today is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 35 through 38. And these, this is Jesus' interaction as he shares compassion. Hear now God's word to us. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. This is the word of the Lord. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you showed in your life such compassion for people, that you cared for the vulnerable and the oppressed. Thank you for the invitation to be laborers with you as we seek to live out the gospel in our community. Open our hearts to hear from your message today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So Jean and Rosemary Dykema actually helped with adult education today, and both of them taught us how to study, the importance of the spiritual practice of studying. And one of the things that uh, Rosemary was talking about is how to retain what you learn. And it involves repetition and some explanation. So what I wanted to do is remind you about our fall sermon series as we begin our time together. Our fall sermon series, September, October, November, focuses on the theme of a thriving church. And I'm following, actually, the ideas that came out of our vision statement that we created in June. And our vision statement... Ah, it unplugged itself. Now it's back on, Gary. Are you connecting it now? Okay. Good. Catch me if it does that again. So Christ-centered spiritual formation for all ages... The second topic and second area that we're focusing on is the theme for October sermons, and it's on community outreach. And for us here at the church, one of the things we're looking at is how do we use our facilities as a resource for our community and our community outreach? And then the third area is looking at financial viability and stability. And so what we're looking at in our church is how do we take care of our finances here, do good stewardship, And so in the month of November, we'll talk about gratitude and generosity. So you see how those three areas are our theme for the fall, a thriving church looking at those three areas, September, October, November. Since we're in October, we're talking about community outreach and mission during this month. And in our passage today, Jesus talks about the harvest being plentiful, but that the laborers are few. I want to remind you that Jesus lived in an agrarian society. He was used to seeing wheat fields, grapevines, and olive trees. Living in Newburgh, I feel more connected to the stories of the gospel because we also are surrounded by agriculture here. We have also wheat fields and grapevines, and we have more filbert trees than olive trees, but you get the idea. It's very much an agricultural world we're in here, different than when I lived down in Pasadena. California. This story reminds me of my experience um, visiting our church members, Amanda and Anthony Stevens, over the last couple years. And many of you, I know, have gone to Nottinghamshire Farms. By the way, the Stevens family is visiting Mount St. Helens this weekend. That's why they're not with us today. But when you go over to the Stevens farm, what you notice is that they can share with you what it's like to be a farmer. And sort of the highs and lows, when, it, when the rain comes and the harvest is, is coming because of that and the sun has come, but it's got not too much heat, then they have a great harvest. But when it's difficult is, is if the sun is there and there's no rain, and that happened for part of the summer. So I talked to Anthony, <clears throat> Anthony or Amanda, and they'd be like, yeah, it's kind of a rough time for us. Sometimes they also would struggle to find laborers for the field uh, that they, they take care of. And so they talk about, oh, we're trying to find the right team of people to help us make sure that we can harvest our crop. So that's real-life example from our local community here 
of what Jesus is talking about from his agrarian society about the harvest. Jesus is always using illustrations that connect to the people of his day and to his community. And I want to ask you, as you listen to that little passage of scripture that I read today, I wonder what stood out to you. What stood out to me is that Jesus sees the crowds and has compassion on them. He sees the crowds and has compassion on them. They are helpless and they are harassed like sheep without a shepherd. And I I notice that Jesus, in showing compassion to people, he does that through his ministry of healing and as he preaches good news to them. So that was one of the ways he at least shared compassion to people. He also cared about people's emotional needs, and he was always offering the gift of love and community to them. Jesus also invites the disciples to pray for the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. And that got me thinking about, am I called to be one of those laborers? I think so. And as a pastor, this story makes sense to me because I feel my calling is to walk along people who are struggling with faith. That's part of my call to be a laborer for Christ. Some years ago, as I was discerning my call to ministry, I realized that a phrase that was helpful for me in terms of my own sense of identity is that I was called to help people receive God's grace and love. And now that I'm part of this church, I realize maybe a better way to talk about it is I'm called to help people receive God's grace, hope, and love. And I also am learning that it's not just my personal call as an individual, but now that I'm with all of you, I realize we can do this together. We get to help people receive God's grace, hope, and love together. It's easy as a pastor to try to put a church on one's shoulders and carry it. And to be honest, that's kind of how it felt during the pandemic when it first started. It was myself and Karen, my wife, was on piano, (laughs) and Gary and Paula were helping out, and Noah Catterman was doing drums, and And then we got Lish and and Mark involved and some other people through the summer. But it felt like a few of us were trying to carry things. But now I'm starting to realize we don't have to think like that anymore. We, We can do this as a team. I'm learning that I don't have to be just this independent person doing this, but I can be a co laborer with others. And regarding to the idea of praying for. God to bring laborers to the harvest, that that reminded me of how Karen and I have been praying for this church since we got here, and others of you have been praying as well. We've been praying for the growth of this church, and we feel like God keeps answering our prayers. Friends, the harvest is coming into our church, and God is bringing us many people that need a safe place to hear the message of the gospel. I'm starting to understand the unique calling of First Presbyterian Church of Newburgh. It's been a journey over almost four years, and I'm starting to discern this, I think, with your help. Here's some ideas about that. We are a warm and welcoming community that shows the compassion of Jesus to hurting people. We are a safe place where it's okay to not be okay, where the burdens of this world can be shared in honest ways. We are called to be a community for people who sometimes feel wounded by the church or by a type of Christianity that feels judgmental and frankly toxic. There is a reason grace is the first part of our mission statement here. We wish to be a gentle and kind place, a church that reminds us of the power of forgiveness. There's also a reason that we are a people of hope instead of hopelessness. Our little church keeps believing that we have a future. We have been a fairly small church for most of our 132 years, and yet we keep plugging along with courage and hope in the future, knowing that God is our source of hope. Ultimately, we are a people defined by God's love. Love is the goal of our lives. We are on a journey to learn to receive and give love. God is the source of love because God is love and we are the image bearers of God in the world around us, called to spread love and receive love. What a beautiful calling for the church. 
I feel Newburgh First Presbyterian is called to live out this mission through our outreach in our community. We are called to be co-laborers with other followers of Jesus and other people of faith or those who do not identify with a faith but who have a huge heart of compassion and justice for a world in need. We are called to be in solidarity with the vulnerable in our world. And who are the vulnerable? Well, I've been listening to you. You've been sharing in our praises and our prayer requests some of the vulnerable. Some of the people that you've been mentioning are BIPOC students and other BIPOC residents. And just as a reminder, BIPOC stands for Black Indigenous Persons of Color. You're telling me that we need Newburgh to be a community that celebrates the ethnic diversity of our town and that cares for these members of our town. You've been telling me also that you want us to be sensitive to members of the LGBTQ plus community who wish to feel welcomed in our town rather than viewed as less worthy than others. That's what you're telling me. And as we think about the BIPOC community, we especially think about the Latinx community in town, which represents about 18% of our population in Newburgh. It's more like 70% in Woodburn, just around the corner. Some of these folks work in agriculture and, actual, and are actual laborers for the harvest we enjoy in our grocery stores. To those in Newburgh who are nervous about ethnic diversity and other forms of diversity, we wish to say as a church, we love you too, and we want to help you grow. We want to help you open your arms. No need to be afraid. No need to store up hate and fear. Instead, let us demonstrate love for all. Friends, this is the mission of the gospel in our time. This is the work of the gospel. Sometimes I wonder if the laborers are few, but then I see people with signs that say love, not hate. Signs that say you are enough and do not give up. I'm encouraged when my friend Susan Doak sent me a text and asked me to participate in this special prayer vigil to address racism that will happen over at North Valley Friends Church on the Peace Trail over here at the Labyrinth. It's tonight at 7 p.m. Just look up North Valley Friends Church, Google it, you'll know where to go. We're going to go up there, we're going to pray, we're going to support each other. It's going to be a very peaceful, loving time. I get encouraged when people like Susan do something and invite me to participate. And community outreach for each of us may look different in different ways, uh, different in some ways. You may have a cause or concern that's different than the one I'm mentioning today. And I want to hear those causes and concerns. I want to know what you're interested in. I was talking to my friend Matt Johnson, who's a pastor over at McMinnville, Presbyterian, First Presbyterian Church of McMinnville. He says that there's a, a family connected to his church, and they somehow have a connection where they're going to help provide resources for an Afghan family that's coming to Oregon. And they're going to help make sure that those refugees are supported. What a beautiful calling for them to help with. Maybe there's a refugee family we want to support. Maybe you can help me think about that, or we can explore that. Maybe you're passionate about caring for God's creation, for the environment. We could become an earth care congregation if we wanted to get some people involved in helping us do that. I love that we have a heart for prisoners in this church. And Lish and Mark have helped bring that with their work with Remnant Initiatives, who help folks leave prison and re-enter society. That's a great cause. I'm really interested also in the passion our church has for supporting our police officers, our firefighters, our first responders. What a great thing to celebrate the service of those people for our community. And I go to Kiwanis with my buddy Bob Andrews, and we go and we learn about all sorts of wonderful things we can do to support our community. Isn't that exciting? That's what community outreach is all about, and we want to use our church here to help. And it's little things we do, too, that involve caring for our community. Helping children get a good education, even with COVID challenges. We have a lot of teachers that help do that. Maybe you've been feeling called to care for a neighbor who has mobility challenges or who is lonely. You're calling maybe to pray for others or to share a conversation with someone who is lonely. Maybe to provide a meal for someone who is without a home. I was over at Jaquith Park 
this week and I had a couple of cans that I, had, I was sharing a lunch with a friend and after, the, after we finished our cans, we, we saw these people and they had, they had asked us if we would you know, give, us, give the cans to them because they wanted to recycle them and get some money for that. We offered that to them. These folks were without a home and, and the guy just said, thank you for noticing me. Thank you for caring. And I said, we do care. You know, the same week, I saw Elise Presich and Catherine Millage give away two bikes with our bike ministry that's connected to Love, Inc. And, the, and some folks came in who really needed a bike and didn't have a lot of income. That's an expression of, of love and compassion. Compassion means caring for our own spouse if we're married, children, grandchildren possibly, or, or nephews and nieces. Or possibly there's a friend in your life who needs a shoulder to cry on. If you're wondering how you might be called to be a laborer for Christ in this season of your life, just talk to God about it. God will put someone on your heart to care for. Jesus says that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And then after this part of the story, Jesus sends out his disciples in twos to go out and share the good news of the gospel and to bring healing and love to others. Let us also go out into the world, not just as individuals, but as a community, as members of the body of Christ, called to spread God's love to a world in need. Will you pray with me? Jesus, thank you for Newburgh First Presbyterian Church. Thank you for the way that you're shaping our, our mission together in this season. Thank you for the 132 years of this church and how we've been able to be a light to this community. We want to be laborers for you, for the harvest that is here. So many people out there need a safe community where they can express their questions, even their doubts, and hear a message of grace, hope, and love. Help us to invite people here and to welcome, but also help us to reach out, to go out into our community and find ways that we can show compassion in your name. And thank you that we know we do this only by the power of you, Holy Spirit. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.